What is up guys, Iced Cacus here. Thank you so much for stopping by. And today, we are going to be showcasing how to beat any of the legend and eventually master lost sectors solo within Destiny 2 Beyond Light. Doing so is going to reward exotic armor pieces. And in fact, beating these solo is the way to get the brand new Beyond Light exotic armor pieces. So you definitely want to know how to do that. And so let's get started. But just before we do, at the same time I'm putting out this video, I'm going live with my podcast, The Real Gamer hour every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. I host it with MTashed and True Vanguard. It's so much fun. The community reception has been fantastic. So definitely pause the video, click the first link in the description down below and go and check it out. All right, now let's start with the guide. So very importantly with these lost sectors, there's going to be a different legend one and a different master one, legend being at 1250, master being at 1280 every single day, like they're going to rotate daily, but they share some certain very important similarities, which is how I'm able to make a guide like this. We're going to be going over the tactics and importantly, the gear you can use to beat these lost sectors solo, no matter which one is on offer that day. So the most important similarity and the defining feature of your build is the fact that you will have to face champions in these lost sectors, but there's only ever overload champions and barrier champions. So let's talk about those barrier champions. You will need some way to pierce their shields. So on offer this season, we have firstly SMG shield piercing rounds. Now, by far the best legendary SMG in the game is the Aikilos SMG. Not only is it quite powerful, it can produce Warmind Cells, so if you have any Warmind Cell mods for your armor, that can really lead to some powerful combinations, and being able to produce and blow up Warmind Cells really helps clear out these lost sectors of trash mobs very, very fast, especially because you can actually put a solar elemental damage onto Warmind Cells, so it's kind of like cheating and getting an extra element in order to take down solar shields without actually having to equip a solar weapon. Now, aside from that, frankly, any legendary SMG would do the job, but the brand new one from Wraithborn Hunts can actually spawn with Vorpal Weapon to do extra damage against those champions. So that's definitely a consideration as well. However, you can also use an exotic. The best exotic SMG in my opinion is the Risk Runner. This thing, and you're gonna see some background gameplay with it, was simply phenomenal. If you're in a lost sector against Fallen, they are shooting arc 99% of the time. So you're gonna mitigate 50% of the incoming arc damage and charge yourself to output way more damage and have basically an infinitely sized magazine. It's truly fantastic. Not to mention on some of the lost sectors, there's environmental hazards that are arc, like it's a bunch of Vex milk. So you can jump in those to charge yourself or stay in those longer and resist that damage. Now the other option you have is anti-barrier pulse rifles. So you can just use any legendary pulse rifle. However, if you're going to use this, frankly, you should be using the no time to explain exotic pulse. The reason being is because the no time to explain is actually a great weapon against higher tier enemies, bosses, champions, etc. Against a barrier champion, it can shoot pretty much infinitely as long as you're getting precision shots because it will refund those rounds to the magazine. It also lets you, and this will take a lot longer than normal, but if you're a newer player and don't have a lot of gear, but you do have the no time, you can just sit there and pick away at the boss and eventually you will kill it. Again, you basically have infinite ammo. Now, the one other option for dealing with barrier champions is going to be the Ariana's Vow exotic special hand cannon. It's kind of a way to sneak a special weapon into an activity like this when you should be using a primary. That's gonna be fine, but moving on from there, we have to also deal with overload champions. Now, we do have overload auto rifle rounds and overload scout rifle rounds. However, 
I would recommend against both of these because later on in your artifact, you're actually gonna unlock two extremely important mods that let you deal with overload champions in a very different way than just shooting them. You can get thermal overload. Solar and stasis grenades cause disruption, delaying ability regeneration and lowering combatant damage output, and it's strong against overload champions. So what you can do is instead of shooting an overload champion with an auto rifle and that auto rifle overload rounds mod on, instead you can hit them with a solar or stasis grenade as long as you have this mod on. And this just changes everything, especially when you can combine it with another perk within this tier, Surge Eater. Recharge your grenade ability whenever you or a member of your fire team disrupts a champion. So the basis of your build should be as follows. You definitely want a class item with both of these mods. This is going to let you throw a grenade, stun the overload champion, and as you can see from the background gameplay, instantly get your grenade back. And it's in this stun duration that you can deal with this champion. Now, because of that, I would highly recommend putting on a grenade that does damage over time. So for stasis, that's the dusk field grenade. However, if there are solar shields present and you're running solar, you know, if you're on warlock, the sunspot grenades, those are fantastic. Otherwise, probably fusion grenades to stick them and kind of guarantee that stun. And consider using an exotic armor piece like the armamentarium right here that gives you grenade benefits. In this case, another grenade in case I miss or screw up, I have another option. But because you're using those grenades to deal with the overload champions, and then you're gonna be using a primary, either a pulse or an SMG to deal with the barrier champions, it lets you use a special weapon for damage dealing instead of having to run two primaries. But when I say damage dealing, that actually encompasses two different pieces of gear used for two different things damage against champions and killing champions fast, and then damage against the end boss of the Lost Sector. Firstly, let's talk about killing those champions. You are gonna have to have something close range to deal with the overload champions, and by far the easiest one is a good sword. I have this Fallen Guillotine here, but frankly, any sword with Relentless Strikes plus Whirlwind Blade, that's the wombo combo, that is going to be fantastic for just killing those overload champions after you've stunned them very, very fast. The play pattern here is a few swipes to trigger Whirlwind's Blade extra damage, followed up by a heavy attack, and then if it's still not dead, you can usually do a finisher to finish the champion off. Or you can actually use a powerful shotgun. In this case, my perfect paradox has been absolutely fantastic. And again, you're gonna see some gameplay in the background of me absolutely destroying champions with this weapon. If you don't have the perfect paradox, the Aikilos shotgun is another good option, but frankly, a fast firing shotgun with a damage increasing perk, mainly trench barrel is gonna be your best friend here, can absolutely deal with those champions very swiftly. Also remember, when we're talking about grenades and stunning and all that stuff, Demolitionist, if you do have it on certain weapons, that's gonna be good as well. But then, as I've said, we also need to deal with that boss, and running up to it and sorting it or shotgunning it is often not going to work. Sure, maybe you can get away with it, but more often than not, you're gonna be killed with the adds that also spawn in the arena or just stomped by the boss. So having something a little bit longer range to deal with that boss is a great idea. The best, by far, is the Anarchy Grenade Launcher. If you have this thing, it's frankly easy mode. Use whatever SMG that has the element that matches most of the shields that you find, plus, you know, the perfect paradox, plus an Anarchy. I was running Legendary Lost Sectors in like five minutes. It is incredibly efficient. However, I'm aware that not everyone has the Anarchy. So what are some alternatives? Well, if you're using a sword to deal with the champions, you want a sniper rifle to deal with the boss. In the kinetic slot, we have stuff like the Supremacy. This is a fantastic weapon here. We also have the Long Shadow. That's gonna be a lot easier to get, certainly, than the Supremacy. But basically, like a good sniper rifle with triple tap, something like that, to really increase the amount of damage you can do to a target. 
In the energy slot, the best by far is the Aikilos sniper rifle that was widely available last season. Its god roll of fourth times the charm plus high impact reserves is great. If you have an old school trophy hunter, that would be fine as well. And frankly, running a good sniper rifle to deal with the boss and potentially damage the barrier champions, as well as an SMG to pierce those shields and a sword to deal with the overload champions fast, that is probably going to be the most common and the best loadout to challenge, frankly, any lost sector. Again, if you do have that anarchy present or you don't have a good sniper and you do have a good shotgun, running again an SMG to pierce barriers combined with that good shotgun and then either the anarchy or just a good god roll grenade launcher to fulfill the damage against the boss roll that is also a good alternative. Now as for some general tips, on your chest armor put on a concussive dampener to reduce the splash damage. Most of the powerful enemies in Lost Sectors are going to be splash damaging you, especially the champions, so that really does matter. Also whenever you do deal with a champion, try to kill all of the adds around it first in order to take down the champion by itself. It's going to be a lot easier when you do that. Remember also that you start with three lives, but gain another one for every champion you kill. So it can be worth it to end up dying as long as you get that champion kill or get a powerful shielded enemy dead. Honestly, if you are taking your time and really going too slowly, once you get to that 15 minutes mark, you're no longer going to be able to revive. So make sure you're willing to die in order to take down a super powerful enemy that's going to make your life easier. Remember also that once you kill the boss, you can open the chest and get the exotic. A lot more enemies are going to spawn after that point, but if you can use your super or go invisible or whatever you can do to get to that chest and simply open it, you're done. And then you can just leave with the remaining enemies still around. And lastly, you should absolutely have a finder and a scavenger mod for whatever special and heavy weapon you're using so you can use them much more liberally. Guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.